Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition, and hold on to your hats for an incredibly large monthly roundup. Hello and welcome to the new year everybody. Um, yay 2020 is over and we're finally launching into what is hopefully a, a better year for not just our lives but for board games too. Um, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas um, and that you know January wasn't entirely too miserable. Um, yeah and this is the episode where I talk about my board game collection. Um, hello to those of you uninitiated. This is um, video is my super casual one where I sit down and I talk about the games I've acquired, games I've been playing, um, trades and things like that and then games on my wish list. And as always I invite you the viewers at home to tell me all about the great things you've been playing or the not so great stuff or the things you've been oogling and wish you could get a hold of, you know, all that kind of stuff. I love hearing about other people's games as much as I love talking about my own. Um, so yeah, this has been a fun month. Um, it's been really busy. This has been two months actually, right? Because those of you who are sharp eyed will notice that December's monthly roundup was in fact the Golden Board Game Awards, which we renamed the Inquisition Awards. Yeah, didn't we? We did? Yeah, so I always make that video over Christmas with my husband and it causes me no end of stress um, to have to, you know, have somebody else on set and try and, and like them correctly and see what they say, all the kind of stuff. Yeah, it was really stressful, but also really fun. So if you haven't checked that out yet, you might you might want to. Um, and for those of you who follow me along on Patreon, you got access to like, you know, ex exclusive behind the scenes footage per se, um, as I try to give you all something nice. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a big addition, so hold on to your hats, and if you don't want to listen to everything I have to say, I'm putting in timestamps for the different games and the different sections, and there'll be a personal bit at the end, because I have some very exciting news there, if you can hold out all the way, all the way along. Um, but, because this is a two month edition, this is big, real big, meaning that normally I would talk about the games I got and then I talk about games I've played. Well, actually most of the games I've got, I've played. So I'm gonna put them into one section just for this month um, until we get things back on the road again. And I guess I should just like jump right into it, right? Um, so the first game I'm gonna talk about is Black Angel from Pearl Games, I believe. Um, I could have swore I talked about Black Angel on the very last monthly roundup we did, but I didn't find it in the little notes and things. So it must've just come just, you know, before or after the cutoff for the last video. Um, and yes, it is a game in which you are in space. It's beautifully coloured by the lovely Ian O'Toole. And in that you are basically robots on a spaceship that is trying to reach a destination and you are basically the, you're the last kind of, of Earth and you're sent off and your robots are running the ship so that, you know, the people in stasis will get there safely. Um, I don't know how well that theme translates actually into what you do in the game. It's mostly kind of a, um, an action selection thing. There are dice and you'll need to have a particular number of dice to do your actions. Um, and you have your own player board which you're trying to fill out with different types of actions so you can activate them um, and score points and whatnot. Um, first time I played it actually we liked it a lot. Um, and we were like, oh, we should play this again. Well, we still remember how to play. And the second time around, it just felt kind of stale and a little bit long. Um, that might yet again be the case of um, a two player only problem. Um, so that there was kind of less interactivity between the dice and then the different things you could buy because all of that alters as people interact with it. So there might be something to do with that. So, um, so that is kind of my look at Black Angel. Um, uh, all right, not great, looks gorgeous though. I hate when that happens, don't you? Um, but I could see why people enjoy it. I think it's well put together actually, it's well designed. It just didn't kind of hit all of the markers that we would be looking for. Okay, so next after Black Angel, I'm not even sure these are in order. Me and my trusty phone are gonna tell you. Oh yeah, so this actually might be in order. So this is exciting because <laughs> Kickstarters are always exciting, right? Especially ones that, well, maybe you're maybe not so excited, but the ones that are delayed and then finally show up, it's like, <gasps> whoo. So this is BattleCon Unleashed from Level 99 Games. Um, and this is kind of their Kickstarter big thing they had where, um, I suppose I'll have to explain the game first before any of that makes sense. So what I'm gonna say is BattleCon, if you haven't heard of it before, is a fantastic 1v1 fighting game in which you play as, you know, various fighters who are all unique, have special abilities, 
and you have a hand of cards with all of your actions in them, um, both of you do, and you get to know what's in each other's hands. Now, not exactly, but you can know you own it. You have a set number of cards you have to choose from, and what you'll do is you'll play them down, perform those actions, and hope you'll hit your opponent. It's played on like a little kind of a line and you move your characters up and down to try and be within range of each other to perform your abilities um and it's very 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 cool um normally i hate those type of games oh my god fighting games are the worst but this one is a very cerebral one and it is very much a tactical game in which you're going well they could play this card to get there or i could play that to go there you know it's one of those where you get inside each other's heads a bit um, and I love it, it gives me a headache, um, but we always liked it. And um, not long after buying one of the, there's a couple of different versions of it at this point, um, different expansions with different characters. And not long after us having, you know, kind of really started enjoying it, they had a Kickstarter for BattleCon Unleashed. So that's the new expansion, I believe. But you could also buy um, a box to sort all of your different characters in, like little tuck boxes and things. And um, we were on board with that because the problem with BattleCon is there was a whole host of characters you could play as, but they all came with their own special set of cards or tokens and stuff like that. And it was hard to keep track of everything. So we were like all in one box brilliant so it was only like a year and a half late but it showed up just before Christmas um and it was glorious except of course you had to sort everything into the boxes but I like sorting so it didn't really matter but it's really cool to have them all in the one place um they've also altered like some of the card wording and things like that supposedly to be more accurate we've we've hated a lot of it so far if anything it sometimes feels like the wording got worse which is disappointing but now we do have loads of characters and loads of its play and we played a good bit of it over Christmas as well um, so I really really like BattleCon it's just one of those games that I shouldn't enjoy but I do um, and you'll hear more from the level 99 universe soon um, so yeah so that is BattleCon Unleashed is it Unleashed I think so yeah it is okay so next up this is another Christmas um, present extravaganza where my husband loves to try and surprise me on Christmas Day. Um, and this was a bit of a surprise, but not a particularly huge one. And it does have a bit of a story to it. So, um, you know, grab in your cup of tea, folks. So um, many, many moons ago, back when I was, you know, but a teeny tiny board game reviewer. And you know, at the start of your board gaming hobby where you want to buy everything and try everything. Yeah, it was like that. And Root had just come out from later games. And it was the hotness and it was adorable and everybody wanted it. And I remember us wrangling a copy of it from a website that probably shouldn't have had it. We managed to get a copy of Root. And I think we also got the, the expansion with the river kind of water folk in it. I love how it said that. The one with the crocodiles and things. And we played Root quite a bit actually. I think like looking back, I had six plays of Root down. So we played it six times. And we never felt like it fit. We just couldn't wrap, not quite wrap your head around it, but like, I don't know, it just always felt odd to us. So while Root was still a thing, we, we sold it on and promptly forgot about it. Um, but the truth is I've never really forgotten about Root. And over the years, as I've seen more and more people play it and more and more people post pictures about it, it was kind of the one I regretted getting rid of so quickly. Yeah, so quickly, like six games as quickly. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of, I missed it. Um, and so my husband surprised me with a copy of Root um, and the Underworld expansion for Christmas. So I was like, whoa, okay, that's a lot of Root. I wonder how it's going to feel when we go back to playing it. Um, and you know what? It felt great. It just felt, it just clicked. I don't know why it's different this time around. Like the only thing I can blame is my expectations um, really for Root. Um, and because I haven't explained it yet and I'm being a very bad reviewer, Root is a game of woodland might in which you all play unique factions in the woods and you all have a unique way to win um, and you're all kind of battling it out to get to victory. That's basically what it is. Um, but each faction is very unique and you kind of need to know what they're doing if you're going to try and stop them from winning. Um, so there's that kind of dynamic going there. I know later games love that kind of thing. Um, and to be honest, I do too. Um, I do like the flexibility in Root um, that you can, you know, you can pair up different factions and things like that together. Some work better than others. But what I did was I just sat down and I played the same character over and over again until I felt confident enough to swap and try someone else. So I played the Vagabond for like a week straight. Um, and I finally felt better about the game having done it that way. I wonder did I just hop around too much? Was there too many options too early? I'm not really sure. 
But um, Root really has settled back in very, very happily. Um, I'm not going to lie. So I'm delighted about that. So, um, yeah, the first game I think we've gotten rid of that has come back, apart from Carcassonne. Because one Christmas when I wasn't feeling very well, I was like, I just want to lay tile to connect roads. Why have we nothing? So we re-bought Carcassonne. So, um, yeah, so that was Root. Exciting stuff, right? Um, I assume lots of you have played it. Um, did anybody get rid of it and get it back? Or is that just like a me thing? It's probably a me thing. Okay, so after Root, I need to hurry this on. Haha! <laughs> so Key Harvest. Yeah, I just came out and said it from Richard Breeze. Um, so Key Harvest is another in the series of Key Games. Um, you may have heard of subs such as Key Flower or Key Flow or, you know, Cathedral. There's a lot of them. And um, we really like the key games here. In particular, Key Flower is probably one of my all-time favourites. Um, I've also reviewed that if you wanted to know more. Um, but Key um, Harvest is one of the older games. And the only reason I'm picking this up, I picked this up was, and you're going to maybe laugh about this, is that, um, so coming up to Christmas um, was my birthday. And my husband did something stupid amazing. He's, he keeps doing it like, Jesus, I don't know where he gets the energy. Um, but he knows we love the art in Key Flower and there's no way to buy prints for the art, right? You can't just ask the artist. So he, he tracked down the board game designer and asked him, would it be possible to buy some prints um, that he was trying to make a birthday present for me? And lovely Mr. Breeze, as he did, sent over a bunch of art. Um, which my husband then turned into like little photographic tiles. I have a picture of that somewhere. It was up on Instagram at the time. Um, but the art we got was not key flower. He had some key flower, but not all of it. But some of it was key harvest. And so we felt a bit weird having the art for the game. We didn't know. So now we own key harvest. And this is a game about um, basically building out your fields. And um, it's kind of interesting. There's a really strange bit, well, not strange bidding mechanic, pretty horrific bidding mechanic where you can decide, like you basically have these tiles, you're going to fill them out on your board, but they are numbered um, where they go, right? So you have to, you, and if you want to connect up things, you have to have like the right, the right tile for the right place. You can't put anything there. Um, and so everybody can draft tiles, but then you can also set the price of your tile if someone else wants to buy it especially if it's a really important one. Um, there are also a bunch of abilities and things you can trigger as you play, but it is mean. Now, I've only played it once, um, but I did like it. I like that um, idea of, well, I, I know what I numbers or things I need to place out on your board. Um, and it's quite, uh, yeah, it's quite clever. I, I Obviously, I want to play it a bit more than I have, but it definitely feels mean. So um, it's got that vibe going for it. So that is Key Harvest. Right, let's keep, keep continue on. I should just leave this list open. Aha, okay, so this is one more people probably know of and it took me a long time to get a hold of it. So there's another Christmas present. So this is Potion Explosion. Um, yay! <laughs> um, I've had owned Gizmos for uh, a while. So Gizmos is also a game with those cool beads, um, except it's much more of a tableau builder. Um, and Potion Explosion is a game about, it's, it's got like these tra these racks of different color beads and you're trying to concoct a potion and you have to fill them your potions up with these colored beads but it's not just as simple as taking what one you want from the rows of beads if you can get them to explode together you can collect all of the beads that you want um well, not quite what you want but you know what i mean right um so that's the trick about matching up getting the balls to line up in such a way that they will explode so you can get loads of them to put on your potion um so this is a game that's been out of print for ages absolute ages so much so um that my copy is german because i was the only way we could get a copy which is kind of amazing isn't it but i think it's a popular one it's also got an app that people seem to really like as well so if you're into that thing um but mostly it's just it's nice to have one or two kind of fun lighter games um around the house I, i'm you know i think it's the time of year for lighter games sometimes just a lot of stuff going on so that's potion explosion and next up do, 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 do. I have to keep tracking along, people. So we have some more of the level 99 extravaganza, as I'm fondly calling it. Um, so when BattleCon Unleashed showed up, I hadn't actually gotten a present for my husband yet. He'd been really damn picky about saying, oh, I don't want this and I don't want a board game and I don't want that. Um, but the minute we opened up BattleCon Unleashed, there's something about the, the games from level 99 games that are just filled with glee. 
And I think it's because we were, were card players um, and we, we loved kind of competitive card games. And there's something about however these are put together that makes you feel like that. It's the feeling of like opening a booster or something. It's just the glee when you open everything up. There's always so much. It's always really opulent and a little over the top. And I love that about him. So when we opened a battle con on Leash, I was like, we should just get you another level 99 game. Um, so we had been looking at Imperial Spells and Steam, which was one of their previous Kickstarter games. Uh, and so I convinced him that he should totally have this for Christmas. Um, and yeah, it's over the top as well. So this is a train game in which you are building a route to deliver goods to cities who want the goods. Um, you may have heard this before, people. Um, what's cool about this one um, is not only its production, because it's got a beautiful kind of production. You have like unique trains, you have all these cities. It's actually your player board, which is the carriages in your train. And there are, I think it's five steps along for your carriages. And they tell you in what types of terrain you're able to build out on the board. Or basically they're like your actions. The cool thing about it is, is that you can skip some and go all the way to the end of the track. And at the end of the track, um, you're able to kind of hand in your goods to the city. You also get mana um, and things like that. So it kind of it, it resets you, but better. So it's a little, it, there's something cool about this idea of that. I can race my way to the end to get the thing I want and then come back and do the steps. You don't have to go through each one individually. And making those choices is an interesting one too. Um, it's a very kind of light game, which is unusual from this company. They're normally a bit OTT and like, <gasps> what is that? Um, and then really good once you figure that stuff out. But this one was definitely more casual feeling. Um, and I kind of liked it, I have to say. It's very, very pretty. Like, we don't have the Kickstarter version. I think we just have the, the retail one. But it comes in the most ridiculous size box, which does fit in the Kallax, I will point out. Um, but everything comes in game trays and all that kind of stuff. And everyone has, like, unique trains. And, of course, it's got all the characters characters that you might know from their other games like Battlecon and stuff like that so that's just kind of fun and it's very nicely put together and nice and chill so actually yeah I really enjoyed that it's nice to have just like a, an easy going kind of train game for a change so super impressed with that one um right so now off we go <laughs> okay um what's next spell smash us all right <sighs> This is going to be a really long video, lads. Okay, so next up is the surprise present I got for my husband for Christmas. And this is Spell Smashers. Um, Spell sma Smashers, the Spell Smashers, Spell Smashers is a um, dungeon game in which you use you you use letters to defeat monsters and then you go back to town and you can use your rewards to buy like to upgrade your stuff to make your letters easier to make and then you go out and you fight more monsters it's a pretty basic concept um this one is unusual in the fact that about I know whenever we were last at Essen, it wasn't last year, the year before, oh my God. Um, my husband saw it for sale at the Renegade Games booth, I believe. Um, and he kept going on about, he's thinking about buying it and then he wasn't sure about buying it. Um, and he was like, oh, but it was only like 10 euros or something like that. And he didn't. And then he regretted it ever after. Every so often he'd just bring it up. So I was like, all right, we're just going to get you the game whether you know you want it or not. So we did. Um, it's actually quite fun. I have a problem with word games though as a whole because you really just get bogged down in the, the serious questions of, is this a word? Time to check the internet. And I felt like we spent a lot of time on our phones um, rather than playing the game. But the game is really nicely put together, actually. Um, it's very um, thematic and very involved. Everything feels like it's got a good place in it. And I think if you like word games and you want a twist on it, I think it's a really good choice. Um, so yeah, we, we quite like that. So it's good to see um, a word game um, continuing on because I do like them. I'm just bad at them. All right, after Spell Smashers comes. All right. So next on the agenda is one that everybody had been talking about. Um, so this ended up in the Christmas stocking and this is the crew from Cosmos Games. And the crew is a trick-taking game, but you play cooperatively together to try and beat particular objectives and things like that. Um, so trick-taking games, they're kind of hit or miss here, I'm not going to lie. Like, have we kept any? I'm not sure. Um, but like it's the and trick taking is where you know somebody plays a particular number of a suit and you must follow the suit or must follow the number and you're usually trying to empty your hand out. 
Um, so as two players, you play with a dummy player as well. Um, so I, t I don't know, it just felt really flat for us. I kept thinking, it's like, first of all, it felt really easy. And then everyone on the internet was like, oh, wait till you get past, you know, mission 10. And people were listing missions they couldn't get past because there's a whole booklet of missions for you to do. Um, and I went to, we tried, like, we tried the first 10 and we were just like, mm, not feeling it. And then someone was like, well, I've been stuck in this mission for weeks. So we're like, right, let's do that. Let's try something hard. Um, we had no problem with that either. I think we just make a good team. I think that's the real problem. Lot, I've ruined many a co-op game this way um, where we're just kind of in sync so we know how we would approach it. I don't know. But um, yeah, the crew didn't go didn't go down well here but I can see why if you were a big fan of trick-taking games that you would enjoy it. I think it's it's got that feel to it for sure. And um, I like the fact that it was a whole bunch of separate missions. I like the fact that it was cooperative. Like there's some very inventive things going on actually in it. Um, yeah, just not not for us. Okay, um, so next up is Crystal Palace. So this ended up here because it was on sale and I've been watching it for a while because it and The Magnificent, I think came round, came out about the same time last year. And I had my eyes on both of those. Um, so when Crystal Palace went for cheap, I was like, let's go for that. Um, so Crystal Palace is a dice placement game and it's set in the world fair of I want to say 18 blah 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 numbers oh ye oldy world fair and what you do is you it's a well it's a dice game and you're placing your dice in particular locations um to do particular things um so most of these involve you wanting to hire an inventor who will then create a particular creation for the world fair which is really really cool um you want to make sure you have enough money to keep everything going because money is really important in this one as well um and that kind of you know fun stuff i love the way the boards put together they're unique boards and they resolve in a particular number and um, revive Reminds me a little bit of something like Yokohama actually with, with that. Um, and I felt like there was a good bit of variety in there and a, a good bit of fun. It was tough, like there were tough choices to make. You're like, what am I doing? Uh, there was also a track to go up. I'm a big fan of those um, and whatnot. And I felt like there's a lot of game in there. So I've only played it once because that's the case with most Christmas games right now. Um, but I have definitely got fond memories of it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that out some more as well. Um, so yeah, so that's Crystal Palace. Um, right, on we go. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, this is going to be a bit weird, but um, so the level 99 game extravaganza continues. Um, sorry, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It just happened that all of their games kind of sorted out together. I think one just fueled another. Um, so um, in the attempt to acquire per Imperial Spells and Steam, um, for Christmas, what I actually wanted to get was the other title they have, which is called Argent the Consortium. Um, and I wasn't able to get it before Christmas. But once we'd been playing all the games from Christmas, my husband went looking in January and sure enough found a copy. Um, I actually think we, yeah, we bought it second hand. So we just got lucky that it randomly popped up. So let me tell you about this one because I think it's probably got the best setting of them all. Um, so in Argent the Consortium, you are in a magical wizarding school and you are vying for position to become the next Ted Chancellor. And how the game works is that there are 12 chancellors, you don't know all of them at the start of the game, who are looking for you to complete specific goals so that you can gain their vote. And only one person can gain their vote. So um, these are things like, you know, whoever has the most followers, who has the most items, who has the most money, um, who has the most prestige. And you get all of these things by um, engaging with kind of a worker placement scenario out on a board. Um, it's a modular board, so it changes kind of each time you play. And the rooms are really exciting. So you're trying to figure out, you know, what you want out of each thing. They'll, they'll give you stuff. But of course, there's a lot of jostling for position because there are a lot of ways and spells to knock people out of their rooms and send them to the infirmary so then you can take their spot and get the stuff they want. Um, and you think it sounds mean, right? It does sound nasty, but there are so many ways to move your, your people around that it doesn't actually feel all that bad. And my favorite part about all of it is that, so you have a number of wizards you can send out to do your bidding out in these rooms. Um, and each wizard is a, a different color and each color wizard performs something special when you use them. And that changes as well from game to game. And I just, I loved it. It's a lot to take in at the start, not gonna lie, um, but it is fantastic. Um, really, really fun. 
The only thing I really hate at the moment is the tiebreakers, and I think that's because we're playing at two players. So for example, if it wanted you to have the most money, and both me and my opponent had the same amount of money, um, the winner then, the tiebreaker, becomes whoever has the most prestige, and that's its own track around the board, and there is usually a prize for having the most prestige. But the problem is it's the tiebreaker for everything. So whoever has the most prestige can basically win all ties. And I thought that seems a little um, much at two player. So apparently there are some alternative rules we're gonna try out. And there's also an expansion, um, which is supposed to help a little bit as well. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying that out. So hopefully next month I'll tell you I've gotten it. That'd be cool. Um, but otherwise, this was a blast, oh, ho, ho, ho. of course, um, and I really, really, really liked it a lot. So, um, so much, like we played it three times last weekend and it only arrived on Friday. So um, it was exciting stuff. So I definitely would recommend Argent the Consortium. So you all still with me? Okay. Um, so another um, game that's made its way into our collection, not once but twice, is now the new edition for Castles of Burgundy. The, the whatever the 20th anniversary edition is now, or the 10th anniversary edition. The, the fancy edition that's got all the colors. Um, I'm not entirely sold on it. Um, so yeah, do you know what Castles of Burgundy is? If you don't, you should just go out and play it. It's a absolutely wonderful um, tile laying game, kind of area control game where you have your own map and you are trying to grow your domain by filling it out with forests and water and things like that and there are points involved um it doesn't sound good when i describe it like that but i assure you it's quite fun um so yeah so that's castles of burgundy but now i have the new shinier version um some of it i think is improved some of it i think is not really improved at all um the game board in particular seems super oversaturated and a bit of an eyesore but the pictures of the buildings are a big improvement from the old version so uh, so it looks like we moved on the old version and kept the new feel a little bit worried about but I guess that's how how it's going to roll my husband decided that one so I was like all right we still have castles of burgundy it's not gone anywhere we just got the new version while it was at a reasonable price so I guess there's no harm in upgrading is there hmm. okay so next thing after castles of burgundy and there is more next things ah yes okay so um we have a couple of things that have just landed so I've not played all of these yet um, so the first one is um, Pixel Tactics from Level 99 Games. This was a gift. I didn't buy this. Um, thank you, Brian Leahy, who very kindly gave us um, a little a little box of Pixel Tactics. And it looks like a combat game, um, all in pixels. Don't know more about it than that. Um, so thank you. Um, next up then is Glenmore 2. Yes! If anybody's been listening to me for months, I've been all about getting Glenmore 2. Finally um, found it. Um, for secondhand prices, which is really, really exciting. Um, all I've done so far is open the box because inside it's all like organized with, you know, metal coins and stuff. I'm a little overwhelmed. Um, I do love Glenmore um, and I have the little box of that and I have for some time. And Glenmore is a game about, you know, um, <laughs> is about you know um, placing tiles out um, onto your board and connecting them together in such a way that when you place the tile to activate it activates everything around it so you're going to make things and get money and be the most Scottish that kind of thing um, so Glenmore 2 seems to have expanded on this with now better art and updated stuff and then it has a bunch of modules um, where you add in and out to play the game with so that's next on the agenda, guys. I'm sorry, I haven't quite made it there yet. It's just that bit of a, a bigger game that you want to have time to sit down with it. So, so there's that. I also got myself a copy of Dominations. Let me check the name of that is right, because I keep calling it the wrong thing. No, I'm right, Dominations. Um, this is one my husband picked out. I had no idea what it was when he went on about buying it, but once I saw the cover, I was like, yeah, that's Dominations. Okay, I get it. And it's a Civ kind of game where you're building out the map and there are wonders and stuff to put out. It looks very fancy inside of the box, but I've heard very little about this game. So I will report back next month when I've actually played it. Um, and the final things I think on the list here are actually expansions. Now this is weird because we don't normally buy expansions, but it seems to be happening all at once. Um, so the initial expansions are the root expansions, um, 
we very uh, once we figured out we liked Root, we had the Underworld expansion and then the Mechanical Cat expansion, the Automa one. Um, not super impressed with playing with the the bot with you know two players. I found it slowed down the game a lot. Now I think there are certain factions that really need to have you know more factions on the table to go to do cool things with. Um, but for us, I was just like I'd rather play the game quickly and have it be slightly flawed perhaps um then include the other bot thing but i think if you played solo it's got to be really good I, I quite liked how they how they put all that together um and then i continued on with going well i want all the expansions i had for root back so i believe we just ordered the river folk expansion so that should be here soon as well and of course while we picked up the river folk expansion we were like oh the new wingspan expansion is only 15 euros seems like a steal so we, we've added that into the cart looking forward to trying that out as well Wingspan is the game I think I only play when the expansions come out. I'm like, ooh, more birds. Yay. Um, but yeah, I love Wingspan. It just never gets as played as much as I'd like, but I have no worry about it going anywhere. Wingspan is its own kind of special category, isn't it? It is. Okay, so anything else now? Last check. Calling it all in. No, I think that's it. Um... Now, review copies, I do have one, and it's a really, really fun one. Um, and this is Arcane Blaster Casters, and this is from Battle Board Games. And I'm going to be doing a playthrough video. Um, I don't do those very often. I don't know if you guys like them when they happen, but I've got some new equipment together, so I should be able to do some cool stuff from over the table. Um, but this is a game about casting spells. And you know how I love a good wizard, I do. Um, and so there's a grid on which you place out your wizards, and then, in real time, this is where everyone holds their breath, you play out your spells in hand and they will resolve in a particular order. So they will be things like, you know, move one, bolt two, or, you know, that kind of stuff. So you have to be quick and you have to get your spells off so that you can take down your opponents. Um, so yeah, it's really, really fun. I'm trying to kind of rope someone else into coming to play it with us because I think the more people you have, the more chaotic and fun it'll be. Um, but yeah, it's looking really, really good. So you'll be hearing some of that soon. Um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, so this is the games we've acquired. Jesus. Ah, oh, well, you know what? It's two months worth and it was Christmas. Come on. Yeah, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Um, all right, so we'll go on to the trade section and I've got something very exciting to tell you in this one too. Okay, so trading at the moment has pretty much come to a halt because of Brexit. Um, it's now very expensive to have people send you games from the UK so that kind of puts a dampener on a lot of what we would normally have done or where we would normally have bought our games so we're kind of in this weird limbo state right now but these were the last trades um we we managed before all of the I don't know the world fell down um I guess no it's not it's not that bad it's just trades so it's just really annoying I think is probably the point um so I'm gonna start with Tobago um, because we'd been having such fun with Cryptid, the social deduction game, and we'd heard Tobago was another great deduction game. And you know what? I think it's not half bad. Except this one is one where you're setting out the clues for yourself to be make them true so you can go find the treasure and dig them up. It's sat on like a tropical island. It's got some Easter Island statues, which are really cool, some palm trees, and you got your own Jeep. Um, I think the production on this is lovely. Um, was it good at two players? No, not really. I think it definitely needs more than two players. The internet confirmed this to me after the fact. Um, but I really liked how it was put together. I think that's actually a very, very cool game. Um, so yeah, if you like those deduction games, this is, this is a great example of a fun one. Um, so next on the trade pile is Pipeline. Now, Pipeline is one that I've been thinking about for a good time since it came out. It and Barrage came out together. And I always thought Barrage was kind of the more interesting one um, until I played it a bit. But um, Pipeline had never made its way into my heart yet. So Pipeline landed just before Christmas. And, well, it's very much an economic game. Let's put it that where you're trying to move oil and then it goes up in value as you refine it, as you move it, and then you want to sell it on to make the big bucks. Um, I thought more of this game would be the constructing your oil pipes. Now there, You do get tiles and you connect them together, but they're not on a mat or anything. They're just literally like on the table next to you. Um, and so the main board really is about pricing and buying tiles kind of thing. Um, it's interesting, you know, it reminds me a little bit of Clans of Caledonia where you have that 
part where the prices go up and down as you buy and sell things. I always like those. I think that they, they fit games very well. Um, and so I, I'd like to play a bit more of um, Pipeline. We'll see what happens. I know my husband hammered me when we played it. He had so much more money than me. Um, but he usually does when it comes to those games. So that seems kind of fair. Um, but yeah, I'd like to play I'd like to play it some more. It just felt a little clunky in parts. But yet again, you know, first play, these things kind of happen. Now, the final thing on our for trade list is laughable. Absolutely laughable. Um, so yeah, hold. <laughs> All right, so many, many moons ago, there was a game that was on Kickstarter and it was about Batman and everybody went nuts despite the fact it was incredibly, incredibly expensive. And I know at the time my husband looked at it, he's a big Batman fan and we all went, nah, too expensive, walk away. And then it came out and there was a lot of complaints about its rule book and stuff like that, that it was unplayable and I haven't really heard a lot about it since. But uh, my husband, being the man he is, um, put it on our want in trade list, right? We just we just threw it on there because it was a game he was interested in playing. And um, just after Christmas, someone messaged us going, yeah, we'd like to trade your Batman game for some of your other games. And we were like, is this real? There's no way this is actually happening. But sure enough, it did actually happen. And I very um, astutely told my husband, I want nothing to do with this. This is going to be bad. And this was nothing to do with me. <laughs> Um, you know what? The Batman game ain't half bad. Um, maybe because I had super low expectations of it. Um, people were right about the rule book. Yes. There's also mostly, um, the problem is there's a lot of symbols. And they don't like to keep the symbols, the same ones in the same locations on your cards or your characters. What? Um, but what the Batman, the Gotham City Chronicles game is about is that... It's a one versus one game or a one versus many where one of you play as Batman with a host of entertaining friends you may remember from comics. Um, and then the other side plays the villains where you get to play, well, you know, all the bad people. And these are scenario based games. So it's not always about beating the crap out of each other. Although that is really fun. Did you know Batman is unkillable? I discovered that, you know, in real time, it was very unfun. I was like, I have him hammered. No, it didn't work. Um, but how it's all put together is actually fun. I actually had a lot of fun with it. I don't like games on area control. I don't like running around on maps. Definitely don't like miniatures. Um, and Or mostly IP games either. And for some reason, this thing just fits together nicely. Um, the first time I played as Batman and things like that, I thought that might be easier. And everyone has like a special ability or a cool thing they'll do um, and stuff like that. So that was kind of fun. The second time around, I played the bad guys because I was nice and let my husband play Batman because, you know, it's probably what I should have done in the first place. And the baddies come with like their own kind of, I want to call it a roundel, but it's like a, a line where you move things up and along the line. So as people activate, they go to the bottom of the line and then you move up your next kind of henchman and then they can activate next, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and I almost beat him with that. I should have beat him. It was very unfair. Um, but you know what? We had a lot of fun when we played it, I have to say. And there's a lot of content in there. It's nicely put together. Yeah, just the rule book and the symbols. Like, thank you, previous owner, who had printed out in colour a list of all the symbols and what they meant, because otherwise we may not have managed to play it. But um, yeah, that's got to be the surprise um, of the month, of the month or two, as the case may be. And that is the last of my trade. So tell me, what have you guys been playing? Did you get any new games for Christmas you'd really like to tell me about? Um, yeah, I want to hear what's been getting to your table or, or lack thereof. Um, yeah, if you could play anything, if you're, if you're, not, if you're unable to, as the, the case may be, is there anything you would love to love to be playing um, just to make, fill you with longing? Yeah, that's really unfair, isn't it? Um, cool. So because this is a very long video, we're going to quickly go to what I believe is the personal bits because you heard me talk about all those play bits. So if you want to stop listening about games, this is the point. So the next stuff is the bits about me, which apparently people like hearing. Um, and I'll catch you on the other side. Oh, really have been motoring along, haven't I? There was a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's what happens when two months piles up. Oh, Jesus. So I hope you guys are keeping well. Um, I hope, you know, everyone is happy and safe and looking forward to brighter things this year. I, th I think we all are, aren't we? Um, and I'm going to start with my really big piece of news because um, 
I don't feel like I always have a big piece of news, but this one is pretty impressive, um, which is that I am now the social media manager for Ren Games. Yeah, I know. It's weird, isn't it? Real weird. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Ren Games are a small little company in the UK um, whose games I have reviewed before as uh, so both Assembly and Sensor Ghosts. And they focus on kind of small games that, you know, have a lot of game in a little box kind of thing. Um, and I've always been a fan of their designs. In fact, um, Assembly was one of the very first Kickstarter reviews I ever did way back when. I don't suggest you go watch that video. <laughs> don't look it past me. I know I can't look it past me. Um, but yeah, if you want to be mildly entertained and see how far I've come, that's there. So um, yeah, I'm really, really excited um, to be working with them. Do I know a lot about social media? I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but I'm going with it. I'm just treating them like my own account at the moment. Um, but this won't be um, affecting any of my regular reviews and things like that. I'm just going to, you know, make cute posts about pandas because, well, they're making a panda game. So um, that should be exciting. So if you'd like to hear more about that, go follow along on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. We're on there too, um, at Ren Games. So that's my little plug, but mostly just because if you're into those kind of things, I think you'll you'll like their stuff. They're, they're, they're good games and good people. So that's really, really exciting. The other really exciting thing is that right before New Year's, we managed to sell a whole truckload of our board games. Um, so we had about 20 or 30 games in our for trade pile, you know, things that we tried and we were like, no, we'll move that on. Um, and it was hard to get rid of things. Um, so eventually we put together a sales post and I sold a bunch of stuff just before Christmas, um, which was amazing, which is also means I have loads of empty shelves right now, <laughs> which makes me feel sad. And it also makes my collection feel small, which is weird because it's not like I was playing those games anyway, but it did allow me to buy a new camera. Ooh, yeah. Um, so that is out of my world, crazy, exciting. I was upset for weeks. Um, so it's only showed up in the past week or two and I'm in the process of getting to grips with it. It's got all sorts of different buttons in different places than I'm used to. But the cool thing I bought it for, it was that it should allow me to do kind of slow motion properly in shots. Um, I really like capturing motion in board games because I don't think there are actually static things. There's always someone touching something or flipping something or rolling something. And I, I really want more of that in my videos. I've been getting very close to it, um, but not quite all the way there. So hopefully that will allow me to do that. Um, but yeah, it is terrifying. I'm not used to good things. And between all the, I got some lovely new equipment for Christmas. So I have a bunch of things um, to play with and to put my ideas into. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, all my little intro videos and stuff get better and better. Um, the only problem with all of these, of course, is that I make these, you know, what I think are relatively nice intro videos. Um, and then the length of my video has gone up proportionately. So, you know, I sit at the end of my review and I go, you know, here's another, you know, tune in for some more short and informative board game reviews. Well, my reviews are up to 10 minutes now because of the videos. My review length, I don't think has changed majorly, but the video is added on. So I don't know if I'm going to have to change my tagline or what, I don't know. Um, you may also have noticed I've kind of given up on doing unboxing videos. And that's simply because, you know what, so many other people are doing them. You know, does it make a difference um, if it's me opening the box? No, I think I'd rather put my time um, into kind of these intro videos. But also I have some other ideas, hopefully in the works that will replace that kind of stuff. I don't know. I just, I don't know if it fit quite well um, with me, you know, kind of doing the unboxings. There's just, there's lots of that already. I want to be making content that, you know, that's actually useful or unique or that someone might, you know, find a use for. So I'll, I'm hoping I'll come up with something else special with that. Um, but yeah, so January has mostly been about getting grips to things with things I am unfamiliar with, <laughs> which is super, super stressful, but also really exciting. Um, if anything, this year, I'm just, I'm trying to say no a little bit more, um, but say yes to myself some more. And that sounds really cliched. But I'm the sort of person that will say yes to everything if somebody asks me the right way, no matter at what cost it is to myself. So I really want to be able to say no more when it's necessary to protect myself, if that makes sense. Um, but I also I feel like I deny myself a lot of things. Um, 
and I want to be able to give myself a little bit more. And I definitely feel like that's reflected in the channel because you're getting a particular version of me, which is which is true, right? And of course you can say that about everybody on the internet. But I'm very guarded with who I am or I suppose sometimes what I'm about. And I try to keep on my kind of, you know, old man mystique, as I fondly call it. Um, but I wonder what it would be like to just to explore more of me in this too. So you may have noticed I have a new thumbnail um, animated version of myself. Hey! Um, my best friend Anna makes those and she is so talented. She also made my logo and stuff. Um, she's just wonderful. Um, so I don't like, I'm uncomfortable with how casual my new thumbnail looks, but I'm gonna try and let it sit for a bit and see what people think or whatever. I'd love to get your feedback on it if you wanna tell me. Um, do you prefer the old version, which was a bit more stern and coloredy, um, or the new version, which is slightly less stern and animated? <laughs> But um, I keep I keep reminding myself that as much and all as I make these videos and I, I go through board games and reviews and things like that, is that I keep thinking I'll get to a point where I have, that's it, this is all I need to do and I'll do the same thing forever. Um, and it's a blatant lie because all of the time I keep finding ways to try and improve things, to try and make things better. Um, you can never really get comfortable doing this, is what I've decided. <laughs> and maybe that's a good thing, I don't know. But um, yeah, like I said, busy months trying to reorganise my life. I hope I hope you have um, some exciting news to tell me as well. I would love to hear from you. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to wrap this up because, yeah, this has been forever. And I will see you again next month or hopefully in one of my next videos. I have some really fun stuff coming up in the future. Don't forget to check out the Tabletop Inquisition podcast where we make our predictions for the new year um, and see if we were right about last year's predictions. That was fun. And of course, you can always catch up with some of my older videos on There Will Be Games at the website. There's also a whole bunch of other cool people there whose work you might want to check out because um, that's amazing. And of course, then there's been a bunch of videos this month and some more coming next month. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm still at it. We're still going. OK, so I'll catch you in the future. Looking forward to hearing your comments. So thank you for watching um, and talk to you later. Bye bye, peoples. Bye bye.